Good morning. Welcome as we do gather together for worship this day as we come together as we continue in this epiphany season, a season of light, a season of revelation to see the ways in which God does meet us in the midst of our lives of faith. We do continue to pray for all those who are listed in your bulletin. Uh, Jim Yessian does continue um, in, he's in rehab at Danbury Hospital, if you would keep him in your prayers. Uh, and I also mentioned last week, my uh, sister's mother-in-law, Debbie Tripp, um, has cancer. She's going in for surgery this week, so if you would keep Debbie in your prayers. We're also very mindful of the folks in t Turkey and Syria uh, following, following the, the most recent horrific er uh, earthquake, uh, as well as the cold temperature. So please do keep those folks in your prayers. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's worship? Yes. Uh, Lisa continues her chemo journey and her Thanksgiving that Greg gave it to her and she was separate. As always, I invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers to our feed. And also, please do check in and let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. Uh, uh, just like or comment in the, in the feed so that we can know you're with us. We do begin as we come together, and as I invite the congregation here to stand, as we give thanks for the gift of baptism. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are full of God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty. You are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of the earth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes. For rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain. For dew and shower. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. The living water of the earth. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and animals survived the flood. The Israelites escaped through the sea. And they drank from the rushing water. Naaman washes his leprosy away. Praise to you for the gift of the water of baptism and for your word. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Enliven our bones. Wash away the sin within us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. And forgives us all our sins. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, give us an eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join in our opening hymn.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Treasure in a field, or there's ones about a 
Good Samaritan, somebody who helps somebody in need. So one thing about the story about wheat and weeds is that weeds grew. So when weeds grow up, grow, right, you have to pull them out. You're supposed to pull them out, right? But these weeds were wrapped around the weeds, so it was hard to pull to one without the other to tell them, sometimes to tell them apart. So I have two things that might be hard to tell apart. Just I don't know why I didn't want more than one or the other. Any ideas about what these might be? What? Um, that one salt and that one's wheat. Not wheat. Right. Yeah. It kind of looks like flour. Okay. What else? What else do you think? You don't know? Yeah. What what else? Say that other? Um, sugar. One's sugar, okay. What else? Um, one salt. One's what? Salt. 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 Okay. No, I said salt. Star. Star. That's very silly. So, so here, so one salt and one sugar. So start. Start. So one salt and one sugar. Can you tell the difference by looking at them? Um, I look like it's a star. If you taste salt. If you taste them, that's how we can tell the difference. You think you know the difference? Why do you think that? Really good eye. <laughs> what else? Any other way that people can tell them apart? We can taste them. We can look at the size, right? So if I was to just take these and put one on my cereal, probably not all of the sugar. Might be a lot of sugar. I would put all. Of so would you put one? Which? So would you take the chance? I want to eat the chicken. You want to eat the sugar? If you put it I on. never will eat my hamburger. <laughs> you just squirt it in your mouth, right? So we would want to know the difference. But if but if we weren't, weren't sure, and you're right. You're right. So this is sugar and this is salt. Very good. Very good. So sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between things. Just like when sometimes when we look at people, that's a thing. So like, Jake there's... Yeah. Like Jake and Gavin are twins, so it's hard to tell the difference unless we have a lot of other twins in the congregation too. Some are grown. <laughs> and they're still hard to tell apart. Huh? And they're still hard to tell apart. So, it's so, I don't have to tell them But that's because I got to, got to know them. Miss Lawrence back there in the red, she has twins also. But it's really easy to tell them apart. Because one's a boy and one's a girl. <laughs> right? But wait, her one, that would be twins. Right? That blonde woman. That blonde woman's husband has twins? Or your mom? Yes, <laughs> my mom has twins. Your daughter. That's me. Right? And so sometimes it's easy to tell them apart, right, by how they look. And sometimes it's not, kind of like the salt and the sugar. So we can't always judge somebody or decide anything about someone just because of how they look or they don't look. So we can think about that in terms of twins, right? You can say one's a bad twin and one's a good twin. No. No, well, that's me. No, and that's true. No. Were, were, you were you nodding your head? Were you nodding your head over But My brothers are, are, are like, way different. They're way different, so you, but you learn. That, that one that. pretends to be good. <laughs> and that one is good. And you're so they're both good. So no, 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 it's evil. No, nobody's all nobody's all evil. So we're we're, we're so, so, so so we're all a little bit good and all a little bit bad, and so we can't tell by how we look at each other, right? So if we look at people out out in the world, we come across somebody, we can't tell what they're like until we get to know them, right? And so when God looks at us, what do you think God sees when God looks at us? He knows everything about us. He knows everything about us. Because he built us. Huh? Because he built us. Because he built us, you're right. He knows our next movie. He knows our next movie, knows what we're thinking, right? But you know what? Even when maybe we do bad things or not very nice things, God still loves us because God looks in our hearts and knows who we really are and that we were created by God. Huh? You're tickling your neck. So we remember that that we can't always judge something by how it looks, right? But that when God looks at us, He always sees sees us and loves us. Right? 
So we still have a couple weeks of this little light of mine. We're ready this? Oh. Let's get our lights up. sing for joy to the living God. Even a sparrow finds a home, and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs, Early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. God. them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs, 
and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what, the, what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what is hidden from the foundation of the earth. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Thank you, <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I was beginning to uh, uh, read uh, through this week's lessons, I um, was thinking about parables and stories, and as sometimes happens, sometimes a hymn will come to mind or another song, but this week it was sitcom theme songs. I don't know why, sometimes that just happens weirdly. So, I have a few starting, I'm not going to sing them, but a few, a few theme songs uh, and see if you can, you, you can uh, remember, remember what they are. So just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. Gillian's Island. Island. These are pretty easy ones, right? Um, now here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls, Brady Bunch. All right, come and listen to my story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer. <laughs> now this is a story of all about how my life got turned upside down. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The, ones, the only ones I could come up that were stories, right? This is the story. And so these sitcoms would often then relate, so kind of giving you the background of what to expect from this particular show. Sometimes making a point of what it, well, not only what it was going to be about Gilligan's Island, not only setting it on that island that they're that they're marooned there, but helping to then set the stage for all that would happen afterwards. Jesus told a lot of parables, mostly in Luke. We can find more the more familiar ones in Luke, the Good Samaritan, uh, the Prodigal Son. Those are those are in Luke. Those are a nicer one. There's no weeping and gnashing of teeth in Luke. Matthew, that's where all the weeping and gnashing of teeth is. And so some of them find their way in all, at least Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, Luke, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the ones that have parables. John, totally separate, could put John aside, but the three tend to have the most, but Matthew and Luke have most of them. Jesus told a lot of parables. In fact, here it says, he didn't tell them anything except in parables. Now, that might be a bit of exaggeration because we hear we heard him just previously, the Sermon on the Mount, say a lot of other things. Not necessarily always parables, kind of like it, you are the salt of the earth, you are light, you're a light on a hill, but often then two sayings, the Beatitudes, the Lord's Prayer, and the like. But here, Jesus tells parables. And in a rare instance, the disciples say, well, can you explain this one to us? And there's times I want to go, Jesus, can you explain all of them to us? Because <laughs> sometimes they make sense. Sometimes we get it. And other times, uh, not always so sure. And it's not always a direct parable. This is, you know, this part is this, is this. This is the kingdom of heaven. This is, the, this is God. This is the people of the earth. Sometimes it's that direct correlation. 
but other times not. But Jesus' whole point in preaching the parables in some ways was less about us and is always pointing us to God. The kingdom of heaven is like. Now, heaven is not that place far away. Remember the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom or God's reign is not just relegated to one or the other. God, the kingdom of heaven, the reign of God is like this. So Jesus is even pointing to the present day, not someday in the future. The kingdom of heaven is like, God's reign is like a farmer, someone who sows good seed in the field. That's what we mostly do, right? Unless we don't know it's bad seed, but we put, put our seeds in the field and we prepare the ground for it. Now, the weird thing about this parable, amongst other things, is that somebody comes and plants, plants, plants weeds. I don't know about you. I don't think people really go and plant weeds. Now, if you were to look at my gardens, yes. <laughs> but somebody didn't purposely put them there, but they're there nonetheless. In fact, sometimes it's hard for me to tell the difference between a plant and a weed, but they all grow together. So I'm not sure what I'm pulling up sometimes when I actually do weed. And so here, this parable also gives me an out. Don't pull them up because you can't tell the difference. All right, that's why my gardens are full of weeds. I'm sticking with it, Jesus said, right? But you can't tell the difference. In fact, there's, um, remember when I was in my first call, surrounded by, by cornfields and sometimes wheat fields were around it, and there was a particular plant, and I'm not going to remember the name, but it did wrap itself around the wheat. And you couldn't always necessarily tell the difference, but also if you pulled it, tried to pull it out, there's some weeds like that too, that you would pull out everything else with it. The kingdom of God is like this world where wheat and weeds live alongside each other. Now here, Matthew, because he's talking to particular people in a particular situation, is pointing to particular people. But as Lutherans, as we lift up what it means to be a saint and a sinner, I don't know about you, but I can see myself in both. Sometimes I bear good fruit, other times not so much. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. The kingdom of heaven is like God's people, who God created in God's own image to be good and proclaimed us very good, but then sin came in and marred us. But God says, don't pull it out. God wiped out the world once, except for Noah. But God says, don't pull it out, because I can do the separate. I can separate what is evil, what is sinful within people, and let the righteous, let the righteousness within each of us, the belovedness in each of us that is created in God's image, that that will be fruitful. And all that is sinful, all that was evil, will be done away with. So like Jesus also said that in the, in the, yeah, in the Sermon on the Mount, Judge not, lest you be judged. We can't tell the difference sometimes. And so to look at one another as created in God's image. So yes, yeah, sometimes we need to point to the sin. But it's not the person at its core. The kingdom of heaven is also like a mustard seed. Now, I don't know about anybody who actually maybe I would talk to gardeners, but people don't usually plant mustard seeds. It's kind of sort of a weed around here, right? I mean, we get, I, we get mustard from someplace, but it's not necessarily that. And it's not really the smallest of seeds. It might have been the smallest of seeds that they knew at that time. But the point of the matter is not whether it is the smallest or not, but just that this little bitty thing can be planted and if you let it grow and grow, it can become not so much a tree, but a very large bush. But God can take the smallest of things, the things that we don't always deem as important or central or very, uh, very uh, pronounced in our world, and God can take that 
and bring something out of it that is beyond our expectations, beyond what we would think could happen, and provide enough for the birds of the air to make its nest. What seems small to us may be big to someone else. A small gesture that we share with someone may seem like no big deal. But God uses that for God's glory. Time and time again in Scripture, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, we hear about God's people who, while we may lift up at times David or Moses, Abraham, were not perfect. They had that weeds and those weeds mixed together. But God still used them to bring God's glory about to bring God's reign to be about. That God could even take a cross, an instrument of execution, and bring love to burst forth from it. The kingdom of heaven is like God who takes the smallest, the seemingly insignificant, those that things that are not considered to be good, and God multiplies it. The kingdom of heaven is like a woman he takes yeast and mixes it with three measures of flour. Now, whenever I hear three measures of flour, I think, well, oh, must be like three cups. You know, give or take, might be a small batch. No. Three measures of flour ends up being about 50 pounds of flour. That's a lot of bread. That's bread for the ages. That's bread for more than just her. That's bread for a party, for a great gathering of people. That God can take something like yeast, the flour, and feed the world. The kingdom of heaven is like God whose abundance is great. God whose abundance feeds the world. God whose grace feeds the world. The kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus used very ordinary, simple things that people knew about, from planting seeds to mustard seeds to yeast and flour. And God uses those images, Jesus uses those images to convey who God is so that they could understand. Now, sometimes those parables, yeah. They're hard to, hard to understand. But when we look at them, not just to see what matches to who, but if we, when we look at them and see what it tells us about God, that was Jesus' whole point, was pointing them and us back to God again and again and again because we can get distracted by so many other things in this world. And while the, some of those things are not bad or good, they sometimes can point us away from God. And so Jesus calls our attention back to God. So if you bake bread this week, look to God. If you see weeds in your, in your gardens, but if you don't see them in yours, you can come look at mine. You see weeds and things. Think about what God does with that. Think about what God does with you with me because that's what it's really all about it's about who God is not separate from us the kingdom of heaven up there but God's reign God's presence with us now and how God works in our lives and through our eyes lives to give glory to give praise to bring God's grace and love to bear upon our lives and that of the world. It's for this that we do proclaim. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our next hymn. <laughs>
are bold to proclaim our faith and our trust in God as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in our Savior, Jesus Christ, hears us when we pray. We lift up the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, your son Jesus spoke of your reign in terms of the littlest thing that these must receive, that utterly transform all they touch. Help us to sow your love and justice in the world, that all might see you in all things. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You have called us to be stewards of your creation. Teach us to protect all green and growing things, from mustard seeds to giant sequoias, and the ecosystems that, that sustains them and us. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Give leaders throughout the world the humility not to assume that their people are the wheat and other peoples are the weeds. Commit them to the nurture of all peoples without judgment. Merciful God, hear our prayer. prayer. Dearest Jesus, we know you are among us now and always. As you heal the sick and infirm during your ministry on earth, we ask that you would bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially today for those we name now, aloud, and in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer Robert, Bert, Joseph, John, Rebecca, Mary, Lisa, Danielle, and Neil, and all those that are on his name, and those who do not know Christ's name. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Keep us ever mindful of the victims of state violence, oppression, and injustice in our nation and the world. Kindle in us a passion to work for your justice for all people. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We remember the thanksgiving of all the saints who have planted their faith in our hearts, like the tiniest seeds, and watched it grow into strong, fruit bearing trees. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Hear other intercessions, other petitions made over the loud within your heart. Give thanks for the successful surgery for Rick and ask for your healing to continue to surround him. For Lisa as she continues her chemotherapy, for Debbie as she prepares for surgery, and Jim as he is in rehab. Be with them all and use the gifts of doctors and nurses to aid in their healing. We also pray for all those affected by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Bring relief to those who struggle, help those who mourn, and be with the relief workers and rescue crews as they deal with the aftermath of all of it. And so we ask you to receive our prayers and hold all for whom we pray in your loving arms. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the sign of peace with one another. I'm, I'm going to say I'm tired of peace signs. It's not a bad thing, but if you are willing to share a fist bump or a handshake or whatever with others around you to share the peace uh, in that way as well.
died, and your reign is like a treasure in a field of pearls of great value.
sign that Jesus is fully present among us now. Come, join in this foretaste of the feast to come. Thanks be to God.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, that in this bread and cup of Christ's very life, you give us food for our journey. As you lead the Magi by a star, as you brought them holy climbing home again, guide us on our way to unfold them before us. Wherever we go, may our lives proclaim the good news of great joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated. We take this opportunity to share mission and ministry and now the deaths every month. We have two more shelter weeks coming up, one in February and then a few weeks later in March. Um, we're doing very well on meals. We only need one meal for each of those weeks. We have all the lunches we need, but we need more overnight hosts. So uh, if you can do any of those, let me know. Great. Thank you, I agree. Other announcements? Um, next Sunday is Transfiguration Sundays, which we also know as Mardi Gras Sunday. So if you've got beads or other things uh, for that, uh, we'll have a, have a celebration with that. Uh, then Lent begins on February 22nd. Where is February going? Just not sure. So it's in less than two weeks. We will have services at noon and 7 o'clock on that Wednesday. So if you're able to join us for those. Um, our next first Friday will be on Friday, March 3rd at 6-ish. Um, and uh, Charlie and I will be presenting about our trip to Guatemala. Uh, at last week's annual meeting, we also decided to uh, use the mission as our uh, Lenten offering project. We do a special Lenten outreach offering uh, during during Lent. So that will be for the school in San Lucas. Uh, so more details will be coming out about it, but it costs approximately $200 per year per child, per year per child, for them to go to school, which doesn't seem a lot to us, but to them and it, it is a lot of money. So we will be helping their scholarship program uh, and also things such as paying teacher salaries and uh, supplies and the like. So you'll be hearing more about that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, also looking ahead, March 7th, uh, we'll have our next blood drive here from 1230 to 630. If you're able to give blood, let other folks know about it. They do encourage people to, um, to uh, make an appointment ahead of time just for in terms of flow of the number of people coming, but they can take walk-ins. Uh, one of the other things we decided at our uh, last week's annual meeting is to have an evangelism committee. So I thank those who have agreed to serve on that. We have Ralph and Barbara Von Bargen, who's in the other room, and Joy and Kathleen, and Jane was here, I don't know where she went. Um, we thank the, those folks for beginning to do that. You'll be hearing more about it, some ways in which we can I know we don't like the word evangel, evangelism, uh, but it's a part of our name, Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church, and it means to share the good news. So we will be looking at ways that we, all of us, not just the committee, but ways that we can be evangelists and share God's love and grace with the community. I don't know if anyone from the school, yes? I just want to say something about the evangelism. Okay. Why don't you come in front of the camera so that folks can hear you as well? So I just want to say something really quick in terms of evangelism. We think it's like these big things, but sometimes it's the little things. I was talking with somebody on the phone on Friday, and and she was doing part of her job, and she deals with customers all day long. And when I told her thank you on Friday, she said that was the first time somebody said thank you. So it could be something as simple as just saying thank you and God bless you or have a good day that could spread God's love. Something that simple. Mm -hmm. Anybody from the committee wants to say anything, I'm putting on the spot. Um, but we're meeting again this week, so we'll, we'll, we hope to have some more information uh, for you. Also finding ways in which the, the, our wider community uh, needs to hear God's love and grace and what's going on in their lives. Yes, Joy. And again, you have to come forward. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to say if you have any ideas um, where we can reach out to the community, um, any events coming up, any ideas that we can share our love, share our work, share our church. Um, either you have someone that is looking for an event space, uh, anything. 
Um, and please bring this to our attention. Great, thank you, Joe. See nothing else, I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together with God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn. Thank you.